so insurance. It is transferring the financial risk of a financial tragedy from the family who can't afford it to the company that can. Welcome to Sajiko Insurance series. This series, this episode, we call it Twitter Space. Of course, it's episode number two, and you should catch episode number one. That one will be hosted or is hosted on our Facebook page as well as our YouTube page. This episode will be going a little deeper into our general insurance, more specifically talking about human content insurance. And we'll be stepping into the life insurance arena and digging deep in estate planning. So we have some very special guests who are the masters of these areas that we want to speak to. And I would love to introduce them to you now. So we have my good friend Shamar. And Shamar, let us know you're here and tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, good evening, Otis. Thank you. I'm happy uh, to be here. Uh, Shamar Clark, Executive Financial Advisor with Sajikor. What I do is really help persons to manage their finances and protect their vulnerable, protect the person that they really and truly love. That's great. That's great. That is, that is my full length of my career. Yes, sir. That is it. <laughs> this is what you do. I have a a special, special type of person in the insurance industry, an underwriter, Raquel. Welcome, Raquel. What it is that you do with Sajikor and which arm of Sajikor? Good night, everyone. I am Raquel Francis. I am with Advantage General Insurance Company Limited. That's the general side of Sajikor. I am an underwriter who does under general insurance for everyone we know and love. And just to help people be back in the place they enjoyed immediately before the last happened. We try to make it as if the last never happened. All right, great. And of course, the man that goes out there to ensure that you are insured in the first place when it comes to the general insurance side of things. Gregory, welcome, Gregory. Hi, thank you, Otis. Thanks for having me. And uh, um, for all, all our listeners uh, on the out in internet world. Uh, my name is Gregory Atkinson. I'm with Advantage General in the position of General Insurance Advisor. All right, great. So let me tell you right up front, you will have an opportunity to ask us questions. Using your Twitter account, we will try our best to answer them. Uh, we're focused tonight on, as I mentioned, estate planning, uh, content, and home insurance, as well as mortgage. But if you have any other questions in the realm of insurance at Sajikor or any other insurance generally, we will answer you. I'll be your host for the evening, Otis O. Hamilton the first, and I'm a sales manager with the Sajikor Life team. So let's jump straight into it. A very touchy topic came up a couple of weeks ago in respect to a vehicle, uh, an electric car that caught a fire at a home. Uh, and it's said that because of the electric car, the fire engulfed the entire house. And they would have lost their home, their car, and its content. I want to throw this one first to Raquel, who would have been the type of person who would have, you know, signed off on this type of coverage at the back end. What does that really mean for that customer? What it is that we cover, if any at all, and what would they possibly get back if they were properly insured? What they would have lost is everything they own physically in this space so it's not just the house and the car you're talking about paintings pictures jewelry appliances tv your fridge your stove your microwave your, your apple your ipad all these simple things that you take for granted that you use every day and you may not even know that these are the things that your insurance would have covered had you been properly covered you would know that all of these need to be replaced okay and they're all valuable in their own right. Wow, that is a scary scenario. So how much of that can you replace with a solid insurance from, of course, our good friends at Advantage General? Everything can be replaced except the memories and the memorabilia. So all the physical effects can be replaced once you have the proper home content. Oh, wow, that is exciting. So everything. Yes, it is. And that is what insurance is all about, the oldest occupation you know. Well, I'm going to tell you a quick story after this question because I'm, we always hear about 
underwriter. You know, I make it worse. It sounds close to undertaker. So some of us very foolish as to what exactly do. What does an underwriter do? An underwriter is an assessor of the risk. So we look at each person's assets on a case by case basis and rate it based on what they are producing and giving to us, what they are want us to cover to protect them. So we look at the, the value of it what it may cost to replace it. So whether it be two years down the road, three years down the road, we're looking at that because the NXY inflation also works with insurance that we have to look at as well. Because you may buy, buy a car now, and we know in six months that same car can be worth less than what you bought it for. But for a house, <laughs> yeah. But for a house, you buy a house today, Six months down the road, the host can be worth two times what you paid for it based on today's market. And you think about it. If you shouldn't lose that host, can you find two times the value to buy it back tomorrow? So that's where insurance steps in. You know, it is such a scary thought. Most of us, uh, we live in our spaces. We enjoy it. We think of, you know, just the things we use to, to, to operate our lives. But you mentioned something a while ago that touch on nerve. Something as simple as your iPad. How many of us, if we should lose our tablet, our iPad, our cell phone completely, how our lives would just be thrown to the curb? But I'm happy that you are here to assess that risk and help us as best as possible. I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm sure nobody else has heard the story on this on this podcast this evening. The, the history of insurance, because a while ago you mentioned that we're the oldest profession. Uh, one of the oldest professions. Now, there's a story of a village that had a lot of uh, seafarers. You know, people go and go fish and go, you know, in the sea. But back in the days, there was a lot of technology. So because there's not a lot of technology to trap boats and ships and all of that, you found out a lot of persons got lost at sea. So, you know, the fisher folk went out to expect them back in a week. A week passed, two weeks passed, three weeks passed. You know what that means. And what you found in these villages, a lot of times you would have the, the, the wives and the family left without uh, so much of really funds. So they kept pooling funds amongst seafarers to put that money to help that family that would have been put out of a, a breadwinner. And ultimately that became a formal structure. And in that formal structure, it evolved into insurance because sooner or later you found that they started to insure the boats. That would be shipwrecked. They started to insure the holes for fire or whatever reason. All these candle days we're talking about. So ultimately, that's what developed into life insurance and general insurance. So in the case, I'm about teaching us something tonight. Anyway, before we go any deeper when it comes to home and content insurance, I mentioned earlier that we're talking about estate planning. So before I even have anything to insure, I want to talk to Shamar. Shaman, seriously. Firstly, I know you're a super advisor at that. <laughs> Why? What is different about you and the information that you give that, you know, has brought you to this point of Mr. Executive Agent? All right. So, wonderful question. I, wish I respond this way. I genuinely love the people that I, I deal with, that I confront and take care of on the daily. So, I mentioned exactly what I do at Sajikor in terms of helping persons to manage your finances yeah. and taking care of the persons that they're, the vulnerable person, the person that they really love. Yeah. Was I've chosen to specialize in two areas, estate planning, and you'll understand why in a little bit, yeah. because of what estate planning really stands for and retirement planning. And those are two areas like, oh, a society that are really, really underserved. Underserved, I promise. Are significantly underserved. So because I'm in that space, some of the clients you don't even know, that's what I'm actually doing with them until a month later they come and say, Shama, you know, I have some money, or six months later they come and say, Shama, I have some money and I'd like to. I think you know of getting the property. So now that's a part that's a part of the estate planning where yeah. it needs to the acquisition of the assets and then now to maintain it, to put policies in place to maintain it and discipline to maintain it. So they like that type of service. So great, great. And I really realize that I really love them. So because I'm coming from broke. So I was I definitely <laughs> say you know what it's like. <laughs> I know what you I, I know what it's like. So I've been helping person to move from that space to yeah. a, better, a better place. So I guess that is my difference. All right. Give me give me an idea of some of the different layers within the conversation. 
So you would ask different questions and stuff within your discussion when you're, when you're speaking about estate planning. Give me an idea of some of the questions that must be answered when you're speaking about estate planning. All right. So some of the, some of the general questions they ask person immediately. You ask them who is the, what the person that they actually really actually look. So mm. I, I started by asking two major questions. What are you really good at? Are you good at your career? What are the plans for your future? They just yeah. have to think about exactly what they plan to assess or what they plan to do for the next five or ten years. So you understand exactly if they go tomorrow morning, these would have been their wishes for their family. Yes. Yeah. So they want to ensure that they own two or three properties. They want to ensure their son or daughter go to school. They want to even further education. Things like that. They want to buy a house or mommy. So things like that you ask those questions. Then you find out exactly what kind of what kind of weaknesses they have. So what plans do you have to put in place? So yeah. you ask that question, they realize that. I don't really have many plans. So then yes. it leads you, it leads you into the conversation of say, all right, I'm going to help you to secure these persons that you really and truly love. And these are the things that we're going to get, but we're going to put in place very early. Uh, what is your take on a will? And somebody will say, oh, okay. oh, yeah. is that rich people something that mommy said no? Definitely. Because if you go on tomorrow morning, I can promise you the shoes on your foot. Somebody would want to come and get it. It's important to that that type of myth. Yeah, yeah. So room never talk only like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, so we lift once you lift the veil off of that. That's just do, those are some of the introductory questions that they are. They yeah. ask for their spending habits. They want to exact understand what their cash flow is, mm-hmm. right? What they have put aside already because most person would have started to do something. They have some yeah. savings. They might be buying some stocks. They might have a car. Mm-hmm. You understand? These are assets that you can still start to jot down. And when beforehand you realize that. They have a nice little estate that they didn't even realize and yes. carry up value. So they actually have some value. They have some value without realizing. And they say, hey, oh boy, you need to know security. Yes. Yeah. And ensure that. So if you go on tomorrow morning, who gets anything? And it yeah. carries them into the conversation, right? You know, and talk to them about, ask questions about um, the, the professional that you have in your team in terms of your advisor team. You, yeah. have, a, you have a financial advisor, an insurance personnel, an attorney. And, and then you point them in that direction. So those are just some of the introductory questions that they ask when you're delving into uh, estate planning. Well, I, I love that. And uh, there are some, some questions I need to ask even further based on some things you just told me. But before I got that deep, there's a, a basic element that I want you to touch on. Uh, what are the things from the top of your head that you will need in regard to getting a mortgage? Just basic. Basic thing. So, uh, getting a mortgage, the first thing you're going to need, you're going to obviously put it in your deposit. All right. Yeah. So, without talking about getting the property. So, you identify the property that you want to buy or the area that you want to live in. Yes. You know that the potential cost is going to be, say, 30. Let's start after go with 30 million. Mm-hmm. But now we, you sit to swing and you decide now that you're going to need a deposit for the property. Yeah. We'll start to save for that deposit. Now you're going to need. So, you put a pull in place to start yeah. sort of save for that. We put a program in place for you to start saving for it because now the plan is to say, all right, we want to get this property in two, three, or four years. So we say, all right, based on your cash flow, the budget that you're going to need, this is the amount of money you need to put it aside so you can afford the, 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 the deposit and yeah. the closing cost. So that is that is set aside. You know, know you have some of the costs that you're going to need. You're going to need an, an attorney on your team to yeah. the legal dragon, mm-hmm. right? So you get out of the way. But what are the most important things that people don't really? Well, it's now becoming, the veil has been lifted to more persons that are no, knowing know about it now, is the life insurance. Yes. You need to get your proper life insurance. Because when you're paying back your mortgage, you're paying back, you're paying back your principal, that you yes. that, that, that the board, the interest by the financial institution has charged your life insurance for the yes. value of the property, and then your peril insurance, which I'm sure our friends, our friends and family from AJIC will speak about well, shortly. Thank you very much for mentioning the parent insurance because I want to segue to Gregory. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just hear about this concept of peril insurance. What is peril insurance, Gregory? Just lead me into that conversation. What is peril insurance and why do we need this thing, this concept called peril insurance? I, yes, team. Yes, so it's an uh, important question. Um, to the term peril insurance uh, in the market space, we we hear about perils and we readily think about disasters, uh, hurricanes, fire, and those are things defined as perils, things that can affect the material uh, risks. Yes. 
uh, will set material risk, um, such as your, your private home dwelling. So it is important uh, to look at peril insurance, which is to secure your financial um, exposure. Mm. As um, our colleague Shamar uh, pointed yeah. out, you know, you spend your life earning and building up your assets and net, net worth, uh, reach into the point, take out mortgage and purchase your property. So there is financial interest in that property. There is value to the property and you want to safeguard it. And you, in saving, the whole mechanism of insurance yeah. is safeguarding against the act of a peril or a peril occurrence. So, and in that occurrence, yeah, go ahead. Question. Uh, this. What type of information would you need to decide how much peril insurance you need, firstly, and secondly, Right. How, how, it, how it is charged, like, like what the premium or cost for a month will be. Because I'm sure it, it differs from person to person, from, from home to home, you know. So what are the, the different things that you sort of use as a gauge to decide what the per insurance cost will be? All right. Thank you for the question, Botis. Uh, from the customer's point of view, the general insurance uh, public, as they're looking on uh, taking out the insurance product yeah. and how insurers would price it. Uh, we start by evaluating or looking at you present a property to mm -hmm. us and the property in our jargon is referred to as a risk. Yeah. So you're saying this property, we go by say a valuation. Um, yes. Yeah. Your, one of your sub question was how do you value or uh, present a value to the, the insurer or how do we as a customer know what your property is yeah. worth? So typically for Jamaica market, we wanted to uh, have uh, a valuation report that gives you a replacement. Yes, I've uh, seen just that. So I've quickly seen make that. a, you're right. And let me just quickly make a distinction. Uh, we we might throw around some figures. Uh, my property is worth 30 yeah. million. Uh, that is in respect of market okay. value. That is what the demand of a property may be, and other factors go into influence in the market. Yeah. Right? But more specific for an insurer yes. to have a conversation with us, we'll more focus on reinstatement, or in other um, words, we call it replacement value. Oh, okay. so what it is really saying, uh, Otis, is that if this property uh, were to even say located in a cherry guard, the property because of the, the environment yeah. or environment, yeah. I should say a locality of the property, it will carry a higher market value. Value. Yes, within the same space of that community, mm -hmm. there might be different type of construction yeah. of, this, of those homes. And th that is what will influence the replacement cost. So literally you're asking yourself, were my property to be destroyed, what would it take to reconstruct this building? You know, you're just uh, in my eyes, uh, Gregory, because I was always thinking it is literally just the valuation, but basically you're saying uh, the cost of building a two-bedroom house is the cost of building a, a rebuilding a two-bedroom house. So the value might exactly. be very high, the market value might be very high in a certain uh, community, and the market value might be pretty low in another community. But the truth is, you are focused on what will it cost to replace that two bedroom, irrespective of where you're going to replace it. Sir, I know, I, 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 as a first time, I'm exposed to that. Uh, right. And, 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 and this platform allows us to, yeah, man. you know, share this type of clarity with the insurance public uh, as they come to Advantage General to seek uh, coverage against perils. And mark you, in terms of Jamaica market space, they will come to you for different reasons. Um, they, it's whether they're taking a bank loan yeah. and the bank needs this, the building to be yeah. covered. And this begins their shopping around and ends this type of conversation. So this will help. Um, I, I'm in sales, you yes. know this. So it, it, it's excellent for me to have this information and dialogue uh, with our potential customers that they can equip them themselves and abreast themselves 
with the terminologies and what we're actually looking out for, right? So in in the private, um, well, insurance, peril insurance, and we want to say it's uh, for private dwellings. At Advantage General, we offer uh, a variety of products. Mm-hmm. Uh, our name, we have our home insurance yeah. uh, cover. So that includes the, the property itself, the home itself. Uh, but I want to hear from Raquel for a second. Uh, Raquel, in respect to yes, yes. in respect to the content, because I know I know I'm hearing a lot as to the home itself. But in regard to the content, you mentioned earlier that you can ensure the content as well. How do we get that done? How do you assess the value of the content? Because I was talking to Shamar a while ago and he was millions of dollars worth of painting but you know one person will will, will say that painting value a million dollar while be said when i go pay more than 10 grand feet so how do you assess the value of content to say all right we're willing to to give you insurance to call this well for stuff like the painting artists you definitely need an appraisal for that so that's okay. why you go to the professionals just like how you check us the professionals <laughs> for the insurance Sorry. So, yes, so for the paintings, those things you'd go to the appraiser, but for things like your iPad, your cell phones, yeah. your microwave, and the, you know, you have a receipt, you purchased it with oh, the money, yeah. so you got a receipt and your show, so that's the value that we would assign to it. Right? You, you may find yeah. that. What do I have for receipts? Because I, I, I have all the basics yeah. at my you see, That is the beauty of the internet. That's the beauty of the internet. That's the beauty of the internet. You put in your serial number, you know, you can look it up and you see what it costs. Oh, if okay. It's still on the market. If it's still being on the market, so you look to the next big thing that would be the value of it. And that's what you would put on it as an appraised value. So for your toaster oven, Mark, you, you may be using your grandma two slice toaster oven. You know, we have long past yeah. that stage now. We've gone to this sliding doors and the air fryer now so you would be looking to upgrade in something so you may have moved so to- like you That's- sell some appliance to them and i'll follow you up and allow me on my toaster <laughs> <laughs> but silence is good to upgrade and even you upgrade and remember with covering the home you also have to keep it in good repair so you're always upgrading oh, and yeah. making sure that it's working that is just like the car you service the car to keep it running you have to service the house to keep it standing well so uh- it's not just the Christmas paint you do it. You want to hear about me? That keeps the value up. May hear what? I I I want to get back to Shamar with the estate stuff, now, but before I go there, because you want me spend all of my money for appliance, I not have no estate. <laughs> so I have one other question before I ask Shamar to jump in, uh, in regards to the estate. Hurricanes are not natural disasters. How would deal with the assessment of that because worse we live in a hurricane belt but we haven't had a, a strong hurricane in like 10 years so how do you weigh that while while they were like five years old, we have a hurricane every year so how do you make that assessment and give me a cost in that allows me to survive while I protect my home and again what is that depends on your structure. Everything is weighed individually. So a person with that slab room is not going to necessarily see his premium being the same as the person with that zinc room. Oh, because we look at the construction, how likely it is that you're going to see a slab roof being blown out versus a zinc <laughs> No, we're going to be like the chromatic tiling and stuff. So the structure that you build, because we haven't gotten more innovative technology yeah. has been working in homes. As you notice, we have upgraded now. We move from just the straight zinc sheeting to the chromatic tiling, interlocking zinc sheeting. So, those type of things, apart from slab, uh, will help to make your structure more solid an and more hurricane resilient. That an audience recognize how oh, would you know these things? Because you tell them, I used to work at hardware when I was much younger, and I never even know them to get away. I tell them about. So, you talk about the interlocking again. The interlocking what? Because it's you told me I'm going to come off in. <laughs> but still, I'm pretty sure you're going around and you're looking at these new builds, you know, what is, you're looking to upgrade. 
So you look in at the development and you look at your boy, you're like, you probably don't notice it, but you know it better than your grandma still, but what we think, room, but you have a pretty shiny looking and you're wondering, you know, what type of material is that? That is where you look at what the benefits you get from it. I know they can tell you this roof will last you 50 years. Hurricane will come and it won't only for us. Like how we saw it in Gilbert. When you're in there showing it, yeah, no, flying no, all over. No, 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 no. We saw those roofs fly in 1988. <laughs> yes, we did. And they fly did. Yes, fly did. Fly did. All right. I want to... Before I go back to Gregory, I want to, to get some information from my good friend Shamar. Uh, you, you haven't mentioned some of the documents uh, that you would want persons to have on hand or to at least put in place when you will have that estate planning conversation, right? What are some of the things you want them to have in place? You mentioned will already. What are some of the other things that have good estate plan might you all right, so, so there's one that I, I find funny to mention, and it's because of how I thought of it before. Mm -hmm. Power, you'd like to have a power of attorney. Okay. Sally, so I saw that the power of attorney was, you had to have an attorney to have the power of attorney. Yes. But it, it, can, it can be any way thinking person that you would deem fit to carry out your business on your behalf. So you'd like to have a power of attorney. The other thing that you'd like to have is a testament to trust. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. Trust this. Yeah, it don't, slow it down, sir. Yeah. Give me that one again because the new knowledge you give it me now. So slow it down. What is that one? T Testamentary. Testamentary. Trust. Trust. Right. People write that down. Let's get back now. Yes or no? The trust that is triggered by the will. So you pass on and what happens automatically is that the assets that you would have had, they, are, they don't go automatically to the beneficiary. They are held by a trustee or a group of trustees okay. and they are managed by they managed by the trustee for the intended beneficial okay right so so with the with the testament to trust what it does is one of the best tools that is that have been put in place over the year to help persons to build what you call generational wealth yeah. because with the whereas with the will it automatically goes directly to the intended beneficiary yeah. and they can do what they please yeah. with the testament to trust it is guided by the trustee so you know the property, say, trust me, decide that I have two pieces of property yes. and it should be right there yes. until, until John Brown is 18 yes, years old. Yes. When John Brown is 18 years old, that is where John Brown can get it. Because if you, you believe that if you give John Brown, yes, I'm going to waste some more. You know, all John's in good. We know John has lost it out, John has to buy bottles. We know all John's <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so that is one of them. Um. The other thing, two things that I want a person to think about, too, and they are topics or terms that person don't like, but they mm -hmm. know it. A life insurance policy yes. and a critical insurance policy. So those things, those things are essential when you're 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 having that um, discussion about this thing. Yes. Like, life insurance is simple. You know, it creates an immediate estate. Mm -hmm. It provides you with the capital that's necessary to clear up all kind of debts and transfer taxes and provide. Your intended beneficiary with that lump sum of cash for them to live or to maintain the level of life that you would have been, you'd have gotten them accustomed to. But as you ask about, you ask somebody about how do you think a critical life policy can really impact yeah, it's, what it's still on to yeah. having estate planning? Is that question that people ask? Yeah, I don't know. See that. So tell me. So let me give you an example. A client of mine, Harvey, he went to, he had an extensive real estate yes. that he would have created, created over the years. So he's now in retirement, so he's getting rental income from the mm -hmm. property. So that is now his estate. Yes. Chacha boy same have a young mm -hmm. baby, right? In I'm 60s. Now he went to overseas, fell down, and there was blood now leaking from the rectum. Mm -hmm. They rushed him to the doctors. When they rushed him to the doctor, they realized that he had he had prostate cancer. Oh, sure. Had 1.5 million in critical illness coverage, rushed and get the critical illness coverage. So, but that was not enough to take care of what he yeah, now, he's real estate. Oh, shoot. So he's heavy on that, but he has a little bit of cash. What do you think happens? To, to sell out. Estate that to sell chat below sell. my deal. I know it's an emergency. So have a, it's an emergency you want to live because now you have a young child. So, what had to happen is his crown jewel in his real estate portfolio is the one that you're putting up because that's the one that's going to get. Biggest that money, fastest. 
fastest. And he had to sell. So the value of the property at the time was 35 million and he sold for 20 oh, gosh, man. Because you want you want a cash buyer. You want somebody now. And the cash buyer knows that you're desperate. So there it's a funny of course. Price, you understand? So so to secure, so that's why the definition, going back to well, I didn't give it, but going to the definition of estate planning, it really is the the, the process of acquiring, managing, and putting in and putting systems in place to distribute your assets during your lifetime and as well as when you pass on, when you're no longer here, right? So you would have realized that had he had a proper critical in this policy in place, he would have still have been property. You know, so, I, so he says, you understand? I, I fully understand, and it, it, it really triggered a story that I, that I have too, maybe not from the critical illness side, but a real scenario, a friend of mine and his father, who, again, rich with assets, you know, has a lot of houses and stuff, a couple of kids, but every child would have gotten at least one major property. My brethren got uh, a very ex a new Kingston apartment, pretty nice apartment. At the time, the apartment was valued about $25 million. But my friend had zero dollars to transfer the apartment in his name. <laughs> Two, three, four years passed, and the man was just baffling, trying to figure out what to do because he could not afford to transfer it. He had to literally get somebody willing to buy the property for cash, upfronting some money so that he could transfer the, the, the property in his name and then buy it from him. He sold the property for about $15 million. And it was very sad, the fact that the property had to instantly lose so much value just because his father left asset, but no money to service the asset. And there is this age old adage that says, Assets without income becomes a liability. Don't forget it. So you have to leave some income. And that is where you come in, Mr. Estate Planner. But pause for a second because the next time I come back to you, I want you to give me some figures, some percentages as to what type of money we need to have put aside to manage the transferring of these assets to the persons who we want to go to. I want to, to come back to my friend in respect to Gregory, in respect to the conversations that you have with persons in respect to them taking out a policy with you. So what steps can be taken to lower insurance premium without sacrificing the coverage that you need? So when you talk to somebody, you give them the initial coverage, them tell you, no, that's a little, you know, a little heavy for me. What can you do or what, what can you suggest to, to, you know, bring that down a little bit? Uh, uh, uh. Well, I'm back. Yes, man. Yes, Otis. Um, listening to your question, uh, it's saying how the customer can uh, negotiate the rate and what steps they can take to um, allow them to benefit from a low yeah. cost. Uh, well, I would take it from this perspective. Uh, first of all, as an insurer, general insurer, uh, the, the whole basis is that we're in the business of risk assessment, right? So looking at the, the, the risk that you present, uh, I, I'd heard a bit of my colleague, uh, Raquel, uh, mentioned the technology yeah. in terms of the, the, the construction mm -hmm. of the units being presented that, that, uh, feeds into our rating, um, per oh, okay. okay. So definitely, uh, we would rate a unit that is slab roof, um, solid concrete walls, uh, at a lower rate than where it, uh, board structure. Yeah. So right off the bat, that, 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 that's a differentiation in terms of what you can do to improve the risk. Uh, we will take that into consideration in terms of, uh, the security of the premise. Okay. Premises, uh, how well, uh, do, uh, you have it. Um, grilled, uh, fire extinguisher, or oh, um, okay. things so right things. It, it it's it's about how do you mitigate any loss. Yes, yeah, right. The whole concept is how can you improve on that. So we would take it into consideration that these aspects are in play uh, as it relates to our burning costs. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I know you have some more line up in terms of calculations. And I can tell you, we in a we are in a competitive industry and environment where we offer 
basically similar cover when it comes to uh, peril insurance. Yes. General, right? We, right, in, in a general way. So specific to us, we want to highlight that our private home policies comes with uh, other benefits. Yes. Uh, you, 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 would, you would just, you, we're all here been talking about the building, the building. Yeah. But there are the liabilities that uh, happen around this property. So you invite in a guest onto your property. There are certain benefits or what we call coverage that are embedded in the property insurance. So we make it, we call it a host homeowner's comprehensive policy uh, for the reason that outside of the peril, um, the loss to the building, property damage yes. aspect, there's public liability cover. There's oh, a carrier limited amount. Yeah, so there, I, 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 why I'm going with this approach, it's not always about the dollar sign. Uh, you want to, in choosing a coverage, it, you want it, yes, to be econ economical, to be competitive, and also a wholesome policy for you. So in identifying your product, you're going to look at the other um, coverages that are built into these home insurance comprehensive policies. That's right. And it, you yes, it's a nerve a while ago. I'm going to say which nerve you have to know. And a shrimp, my yes. listeners and the audience recognize it. You realize that the biggest thing right now outside of Uber is a thing named Airbnb. Correct. So you're talking about the Airbnb now because what about those persons who use a little side bedroom that nobody not staying mm -hmm. in now as Airbnb? A person come there, them laptop, them this, them that is inside there, and there's a fire. Mm -hmm. uh, these all right. Um, all right. The way that you have um, laid out, uh, that it's a reality. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a real occupancy yes. uh, or usage of these private yes. units, right? Um, it's very important when having a conversation with your underwriter or me, the general insurance advice, yes. that it's important. Um, there, there are certain concepts that go on insurance, mm -hmm. right? And one of them is utmost good faith. Please. It's a habit. It's literally you just being frank and open about everything. Um, even what you don't think is important yes. to us. We want to hear. I will ask you probing questions. Mm -hmm. And what you have just described is the usage of the property yes. that is in question. And it feeds into our rating. All right. So specifically, a client who has a, a, a regular home, mm -hmm. we refer to them as private. Yes. Home. And part of the usage on the premise is that they have a, a small office space that they, you know, especially coming on to COVID, people yeah. are working from home. Yes. Work from home. And this is a reality. You, we can incorporate um, that aspect so it, into the cover and into the pricing. Because we are aware that you have such a unit attached or eaten within the unit, and we will assess it accordingly. Yes. No, Otis, uh, when we are not aware, right? So this is very important because you really test your product in the event of a claim. Mm -hmm. And it's at the claim that a lot of information comes to bear. Yes. How, how the damage, uh, how, how the incident came about and the, how the loss occurred, yes, right? Yes. And you will be explaining that, boy, you had it renting yeah. and it was out for Airbnb and uh, my contents got destroyed, fires, such as yes. this. Uh, and I mean, very frank. That's what we need is very, yeah, so here, here be good credits. I, I don't want to be unpopular, and <laughs> I'm really positioned. I'm really positioning our listeners and potential customers to have an open conversation with the insurer yes. because it, where this becomes known, it influences how we treat the claim. Right? It's very important that you stick to what was agreed in terms of the, the with the understanding of what the property was meant to be used for. So it's just a regular home. It wasn't meant to be a rental. Yeah. It wasn't meant to be an Airbnb. That's a, more of a commercial activity. And let's be frank, we, we, it's easily 
are, are readily can be appreciated why an insurer will treat or assess the risk differently. The exposure is way different. Of course, you don't have con you don't have control over who that guest is, what they're How many people are carried there sometimes? And and keep hot and. and <laughs> no, and that's me realistic. That's why that's why you take out the Airbnb to, you know, find somewhere and have fun and chill. Right? So it's a reality. Uh, but keeping it on topic and how we would approach these type of policies, it's 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 not a wholesale approach. Yeah. You want to be very clear and transparent about the usage that your insurer can be in a position to adequately cover you, to adequately, properly rate yeah. you and charge you the appropriate premium. Well, I just speak about uh, rated at premium. I want, I want to bring in Raquel because now you have to get bad spinning. I want to come back to you a little bit because I, I want you to think about the fact that maybe we need to start talking to you before we buy the house or before we start building the house from the planning stages. But Raquel, hold on, Otis. Hold on, Otis. Before before. One second. I uh, remember I highlighted the the, the the avenues or the way in which um, the, the the general public comes to an insurer, exactly. and one of them is when they're with the bank planning uh, taking out the mortgage. So when yes, the bank have you approved the mortgage, is liable is after the mortgage. It's after, 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 after I know. Insurance. Insurance. <laughs> that time for my cartels. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Think I'll approve. <laughs> 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 Yeah, let, so, so yeah, let's see so what I'm talking about. While you, while you give me some more information on that, I want you to give me some ideas, somebody, what we call add-ons, that persons might mm -hmm. want to sidestep, but they're very necessary to your general home and content insurance mm -hmm. uh, plan. All right, I just want to point out to you, Otis, while we are Jamaicans and we know that we're very good at shopping, but yes. We don't have any control over the cost of our insurance, unfortunately, because in the market that we are, we are a wholesale, as you suggested in the beginning when you pointed about all the fishermen coming together to make this product, it's the same thing. So even though Jamaica is in the Caribbean, we're not just rating our clients just as they will. Yeah. We're rating for the entire Caribbean and we have to now be in that pool together. Yes, definitely. So yes, Jamaica may not have had a lot. And I'm sure you saw early in the year when you hear everything going up because of the reinsurance asking for yes, more money definitely. to cover our properties in the Caribbean. Definitely. So while I would say to you, you don't have any control over the cost of your insurance. As Gregor pointed out, you can mitigate how much you lose, but you can also look at group shopping. Mm. Most people don't know that when you're with a bank, right? We are with Study for Group. Remember, you know, we have the bank, we have the life insurance, we have the general insurance. Yeah. Remember, you get you get services from the bank. The bank gives you a credit card that you can earn points from. Right. Earning these points when you spend the money. So why not when you're spending the money, you save up your points for things that really matter. You can save your points to pay the insurance, you know, as well as they use the credit card to pay the insurance to get more points. Raquel, I, we have I, did not know that. Yeah. I did not know that. Yes. Remember, you have your credit card points that you can yeah. turn into cash back. It's not just to go to the party and brought and say you have the gold oh, card. Right. Nothing against no. people. <laughs> nothing against Braff. Braff responsible. Braff, off Braff responsible. I tell you, I'm the gun Braff with. <laughs> after you finish so we're looking at that you let so i would say leverage these things yes. your points from your credit card you can earn we at advantage general we have the referral program where if you refer customers you as a customer you get a five percent referral okay good good this score but referring that person and i've known clients who use that every year their point of duty is to refer as many clients so that come there when you time. They have enough referral credit to pay their premium. I literally. So you have to leverage. I heard that. And leverage you for cheap. Today. Today in my office. Well. A, a, a young lady was saying that it's all she pay her premiums for her house. She does refer her thing. Buy or something like that for right. every year. And right. Pay, and take that client around. That just blow my mind. Please, please, please. Right. Right. So everybody who is on if Twitter right now, right. when you got to Advantage General, tell them Otis sent you. Shameless blog. <laughs> 
Oh, so I want you. And if that's the going to. Yeah, man. I don't want. I don't want to fuck you off now before you tell me about somebody add on. Because I have so many questions for you. But yeah, some of some of the add ons that you might have with outside of basic coverage. But yeah, you always that will cover your electronic equipment, your jewelry, your phones, oh, your laptop. Yeah, yeah. Yes, your jewelry. They're very important. Yes, you know that. $5 million engagement ring that you're buying and you're putting on the things or if you soon lose wow. it, there's cover for that and that comes under your home insurance, your home and content. Most people don't know that. You can Thank put you. these things under there. Thank you. So you, you the Burton not ad- only have the Burton <laughs> And then you have what we call the renter's insurance. So you don't have to own the house to insure your stuff. Oh, no, but you can be a renter you can be a renter and you insure your things because they're not because you don't own this physical structure don't mean you don't have things of value. And how many times have seen persons lose everything and then you hear, oh, they didn't have any insurance. But you can have renters insurance to cover your TV, your stove, your fan, your bed, your diamond set. All these things are valuable to you. Raquel, so insurance makes it possible. I want to pause it because I just heard a retweet of the moment. So I'm going to have a giveaway the first person who retweets this program and make mention of the, what do you call it? Renters insurance. Renters insurance. Yes, man. That is a retweet every moment because a lot of us are still renting, but we have a lot of valuables in the home. So it makes sense. Don't wait until you actually buy a property before you write for current insurance. I love that. I did not think about it. Thank you so much for that. You didn't think so. I learn it every day. Learning every day. And remember your home. And for those of us who are well established and we own the home, we have domestic helpers, we have gardeners, those persons come to your home and work yes. with you. If they should be injured because like us, they're on yes. the job. Yes. If they're injured in your property while on the job, your public liability, you have a public liability and an employer liability, which covers that under your home policy. So you get a bit of that coverage to say it's not just your building being covered, but your liability to other as well. That's all that was a foreign thing. I mean, nobody hear about them No, it's not a foreign thing. So if my, it is something that is on your policy. So if my wash lady, <laughs> in the process <laughs> of, of pressing, slide and drop or whatever, water, and hurt herself badly, you're saying that is my responsibility? Yes, it is your responsibility. So that is where you now your insurance, your home insurance has to deal with settling that liability can you were liable to her to provide a safe working space. Great, great look like when and you then you know things happen. <laughs> yes, I'm, you know. I'm, 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 I'm here. Go. I'm here for you with the star board. Yes. Uh, then you definitely need to be oh, on your piece and then I'm a quiet worried and to be a policy. With 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 time cut it by it's already you're working, you're working at the right place. Yes, yes, but no, you're be quite concerned every day. You no, know, may have to watch because that a day the, the, the person come cut the line of us so often in thing fly off and nearly nearly catch him. So no, may have my concern. No. But <laughs> right, man. He's on my other. If he's working with equipment, he still has to be careful because he can't do it here to himself and then well, there's your one. Yeah, because we have a negligent claim. You have to be negligent as the owner of the property. I'm watching. I'm watching. In not providing. That's very uh, quick one. Uh, yes, very. Uh, let me just shine in a bit. Uh, just to follow up on what Raquel had mentioned. Uh, I know you. I know you like to follow the most. Yes, sir. So uh, yes, uh, we had mentioned ways of uh, getting a premium cut down with a referral yes. discount program, right? But it, I can tell you, we are bundling opportunities. Oh, okay. where, uh For example, for example, uh, you you already take out the property with us. Yeah. So it, it, it you know you want to bring your motor vehicle as well. We we actually give a ten percent discount. On, on our products where you have uh, property insurance with yes. us. So it's, it, you know, it's important that the, the clients, oh, great, great. you know, persons are aware of there, there are other opportunities. Yes. So it's uh, make so to see if they have peace or ice to see somewhere else. So maybe ticket us and I take it. And, and, and I'm enjoying your shopping. 
Otis, I'm enjoying that you're 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 expressing your Allah <laughs> and your authority about yeah no I yeah and it's that it, and I'm gonna say that emotion is very important because the whole insurance is you you're gonna look on the likelihood yeah. of um, an event happening and we as the advisor we're gonna have conversation with you look at your 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 whole um, profile yes. And to see what opportunities are there um, to better serve you, they're, they're what we call insurance. Yeah, deals. definitely. So you know, based on your lifestyle, um, what you own, you might not know that there are certain liabilities uh, tethered to it. So um, you, uh, um, again, it, uh, it's it's very, um, I would say, live to get your expression and all <laughs> at these and the part of possibility. Yeah, because you know, so that's what you, know. you live day to day in your house and you could speak about your wash lid and that that could have been a liability. Really? And it's, so, it's something I would don't yeah. think about enough because it's not just for rich people. My, my wash lady, mm -hmm. I come from me now, college and a medical job. She come take care of me. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not a rich people thing. Uh, I, I have just five minutes left but I want to jump to my brother, Shamar, because there are a couple of things I need to hear from you before we conclude today's podcast. Pension plan. Rates. What about the pension and plan? And taxes. So I want to know what is a pension plan. I want to have an idea of those transfer rates thing that we talked about earlier. And I want to know what, how does all of what you're talking about affect taxes? And and can we alleviate some of the tax burden at the back end? All right, so you're asking me, you're asking me to answer. I'm fully for thinking. Actually. Please, please. Uh, so let me let me let me try my best to summarize as much as I possibly yep. can. All right, so pay some plan. Put aside a certain amount of capital monthly. Yes. Um, and it is it is held in trust and continues to grow in the background, and you get that when you get to retirement. Yes. No, it can the the full payout can be triggered upon the. So that's one of the things that you, I think, would feed into your estate plan. Meaning, now you pass on tomorrow morning who gets what. Yes. So your beneficiary would have to prove that they're your actual beneficiaries for them to get that lump sum capital, yep. right? So, so the pension plan, say so your pension fund that you're contributing to, your NIS, your NHC contribution, those form a part of your estate because these are things that you yes, yes. So your bank account, your stock that you owe. So these are things though that you have to think about when you when you're thinking about your your actual um, estate planning. Uh, and what to go to whom? Yes. No, you asked about percentages earlier. Yes. Right, in terms of the rates, rates, transfer rates, and stuff like that. So the tracks are it's 5 to 7% executor's fee, 5 to 7% attorney. All right, in that down. Right. Oh, so that's that's 5 to 7 so so executor. Yeah. And 5 to 7 attorney fee. So the Mr. Wafting out at you. So for an estate value, that's a $20 million. Mm -hmm. Then a uh, property. So cheap and property, don't know where. Yeah. Cheap. Cheap property, just give just give an average price, some small number. At the end of the based on the calculation, you're going to spend somewhere about three point three five million dollars. Wow, that works so to be for the person that can can do math very well. Three point three five million over twenty million multiplied by a hundred gives you sixteen point seven percent. So that's why when you're sitting with a professional that's speaking about estate planning, you speak to the percentage of twenty percent. So the average amount that you want to have to transfer the taxes from to be safe. A transfer 20%. To, to be seen, 20%. Right? So you have an estate of 100 million, you'd like to leave liquid oh. cash of at least 22 million for the person to get yes. Now, just a few things. Right? The main, one of the main things that I want persons to get is that estate planning really should be reshaped now. It should really be a situation where it is used to reduce generational poverty. Mm -hmm. Now, why I say that is because none of us are here that are born in 1855. Yes. But you have members amongst us that are probably listening to us now that would have inherited property yes. from their great, great, great grandfather. What they would have done as a father of estate planning. I have a client you now that she's in her 20s that inherited a business that is providing her with a significant amount of people yes. because the property, the business is a limited liability business. And she was the main shareholder outside of her mother. So when her mother passed, she inherited the business. And she, her mother passed six months after she changed the business from being a sole trader. To a wow. No, her future and her present would have been completely different had that meeting been locked up. There's an article, and quickly, there's an article out that I read in OUR today recently that I can tell you 
that the administration generally yes. department right now is under pressure because they have what up to $50 billion worth of yes I saw that yes to have been passed to transfer they're getting what average 300 to 500 people per month cases per month now that is burdensome because person that died without leaving will it's not like when you talk to a JDF officer where you know it's average for them to, to, have it, to, to have it it is something that is taboo that we need to have a discussion about and lift the jail hey sitting down to discuss about your, your will and what happened when you pass is not bringing down the mm-hmm. thing because the, the, the science actually speaks to the fact that persons that actually have will and actually put trust in place or put things in place, they live long enough to be I amend mean, with their wills year after year after but year. Some are, they probably get even live long Most of us have that problem. Myself, I would have, my grandfather would have owned acres and acres of land. My father never transferred it properly. My father passed. There's no will, there's no structure, there's no money for the transfer. So I have to start from zero. When the truth is that and my grandfather would have put in the work to buy the property. And I know so many persons with that very story. So now you're telling me yeah. that we need to fix it with the structures that you offer in estate planning. We need to fix it. 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 And it can, when you do proper estate planning, you reduce it go with cars. The, the fight, you know, what dead left. Is that- definitely, definitely. It, 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 it takes it, it take this, you know, I'm going to reform it. You know, somebody can tell you that that two piece, that two acres of land. Oh, okay. gosh, man. Qua- this quarter, the quarter acre. acre, man. Quarter acre of King. The prime quarter acre. And who did they have foreign and never come, 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 come check for mummy? Versus who was a big son and who was a big daughter. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah, man. Correct. So, so with the estate plan, just to wrap up, the estate planning really helps you to look after the vulnerable children to make sure that underage children are, are, are properly taken care of. It ensures that your intended beneficiaries are the ones that actually get the property that you want yes. to pass on. Right? Even though we have a very capable government that can identify who gets what, just know that I think that after taking teaspoon to save up, you take teaspoon, little, 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 little over the years and build up the United States. You'd want to ensure that your hard earned monies and your hard earned asset and estate is passed on to your family based on your yes. not money. And the government. That the government has to say who gets what. And one thing I want to say to finish, remember when you pass without a will. Well, the first person that can lay claim to your estate, who is that? Oh, now your spouse, your legal spouse, your, your wife. Uh, no. Government. Oh, it's not it. Jesus. People. People. Yeah. They talk about it. Man. The people that um, some people may want to pass out the thing. Try wow. So it's important. It is very important. It's a taboo. It's a taboo topic. It's not for the wealthy. It's for everybody, right? So it is something that persons need to engage in, especially starting out with the very basic. Your will, as we discussed, you can discuss trust, your life insurance policies, especially, and your critical illness policies. So the discussion should be started, and I'm happy for this. Um, this was to try to lift some of the veil, right? Some shine, so shed some light on some of the dark areas. So thank you, thank you so much. I know we're way over time, but there are some critical things that we still have to conclude. Thank you so much, Shamar. You just touched on how to even, how should I put it, avoid taxes <laughs> uh, in the sense that the limited liability company uh, that that client would have set up versus having that legal sole trader that, you know, would not have been properly structured in a way that it can be easily transferred. I love that and I appreciate that information. More of that information needs to be out there. Trust funds, there's such a thing. It's not a foreign statement. You can set up trust to ensure that you can manage your finances, manage your, your estate, even while you're gone. And then you also mention scenarios that if you're incapacitated, if you're not able to make the decisions yourself, you can put systems in place so that decisions regarding your finances and even your health can be managed, but you make that decision before you're in a state where you really don't have the control. So thank you so much for that, Shamar. I want to get back. I want to get back to uh, Lady Lady Raquel in respect to what are the things we need to truly appreciate before you even get into acquiring certain assets. You, you know, understand, Raquel, or you really, you know, jerk my nerve when you speak about the interlocking rules. I'm going to tell you why. 
just as you mentioned, we search for discord, to search for deeds. And I'm thinking if more of us knew what are the things that you look at as an underwriter to decide what the real risks are. And I'm not just talking about interlocking rules now. I'm talking about properties that might be in waterways or besides waterways. I'm talking about uh, farms that might be, you know, the high levels of trade and larceny in spaces. What are the things that you have to think about that it will be best for our listeners and audience to think about before they make that purchase? Location, location, location. You have to know the area you're purchasing yes. in. So most of us, we just say, oh, we like the area and we would like to live there. But what do you know about the area? You need to research the natural mm -hmm. needs. What happens when it rains in the area? What happens when there is a natural disaster? Yes. How quickly can you get to and from? You look at the roads because, again, how you, how you get around in the area you want to live. Yes. Is essential to what it is you're going to be able to afford. Yes. As if a house, as you said, everybody wants the lucrative cherry gardens, but what you notice about those areas, the properties, the roadways, they're all proper and well maintained. Yes, yes. And we always say, oh, it's government. No. But it's how you maintain your property as well. So the upkeep, your construction, your constant data repairs, ensuring that if the roof is leaking, you fix it. You're there say, oh, it's true, we own the house, so it's not my problem that. <laughs> so those are the things, because family homes, when you're ready to sell it, it's not worth anything because nobody was upkeeping and keeping the property in good stead. So up, upkeep is very important for us as insurers. And when you're looking to sell your property, it is very important to the buyer as well. You mentioned something a while ago. Resale value, which you have to appreciate. It has to make sense. You have to think about it. Yes, properties do normally increase in value over time, but some increase by X, some increase by Y. Uh, but you also mentioned something in regard to the, 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 the hills and, and, and certain locations. There are certain locations that are prone for fires, bushfires. Mm -hmm. There are certain locations right. that are prone for land slippage. But we can't just pick up the newspaper or pick up the internet and say, oh, we can afford a wonderful buy. You know? So I'd love, I'd love to know that we can come to advantage general before we buy the house and say, I'm looking at this property, this property, and this property. What do you think? So I don't know if Gregory offered them type of service there. Gregory, Gregory, do you offer them consultation, sir? What are the type of things that people come ask you that, you know, would make sense for us to think about? Do you offer that? Yes, sir, Odin. So that's, I'm in the business of advising our clients and, uh, you know, having this type of conversation so they can make an a informed um, decision yes. about their, their insurance purchases. So, um, yeah, you know, free, um, I, I, I won't be able to look Gregor Atkins to reach out to me. Um, all right, so you, you, you made mention about uh, the, in, the clients coming to, you know, take out insurance, what, 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 um, they should be looking for. Yes. Um, it, there's something that you don't want to overlook very simple, but who is to have the conversation? So you always want to start off with the owner. Yes. It's very important. Um, a lot of persons, um, are in control of properties, but not the true owner. Oh, okay. You know, they, that is true. Right. They might, they, they, they'll be interested to mm. take out the coverage. An insurer, it's going to be a contract. Yes. So we're going to need to know that this person has the legal right, uh, what we call the insurance yes, yes, yes. to, to, to carry out and execute a contract with the insurance company. Right. So it's important that the owner, uh, is available mm -hmm. and able to, to have that type of discussion. And, uh, in speaking about uh, our discussion is home and contest. And the, you want to know the ins and outs uh, before you approach an insurer. The, the number one conversation, it should not end, even paramount to price. The conversation should not end without having a discussion about certain clauses, clause and conditions of insurance. Yeah, right? definitely. And number one, 
clause is average. Average clause. Very what does that mean? So, what, hey, well, thank you, because um, that that is to guide a customer who arbitrarily, um, you know, comes up with a figure in their mind yes. as to what I think this property should be insured as much, right? So in looking at the, you're, you're not top um, professional mm -hmm. evaluator and you're wanting to come up with what you think is uh, a right amount. Yes. So the whole concept of insurance is to protect your financial interests. So you want to know in the event of processing a claim, mm -hmm. anything that would affect you in benefiting from your claim. Also oh, in okay. making yes, I get you. right. So the uh, the average clause become a very vital and important discussion or element of the conversation because it affects how an insurer treats your claim in the event of a pay. Yes, it don't make sense. You are pushing for an exorbitant figure when the truth is the average value, average cost. No, 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 I, 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 no, let me let me uh modify um that and clarify. Average clause is saying you really want to protect yourself from under insurance. Oh, okay. You don't want your, your property to rebuild when looking at your three story building, immaculate, so, you know, unique materials to irritate the structure. Yeah. And you, you call, and we, you know, looking at it, you know, that's 20 million yes. easily. But you're going to come in and say, you know, I want a low premium, so I'm gonna tell him ten million. Okay, some people actually under and mark you. Yes. Exactly, and that's what the average clause is there really for: is to protect you from under insuring, and in the event that you do, uh, it, there are consequences. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to just clarify. So we get into the meat of it. So we just use the example of um, the, the person under insuring by uh, ten million, yeah. right? So. We charge a premium in it. Now you have a claim. The claim is five million. Yeah. You're saying, okay, I'm going to call it five million. Mm -hmm. only, only to now be informed. No, you're actually going to get 2.5 Otis. It'd be like, why? You under average clause is saying by the proportion that you are underinsured by, yeah. that's how we equal, that's how the claim would be apportioned. So same way you did half of the property value. It is half of your So you're saying, and I won't lie. Come to right. us. Does it really no. come to us for the right. correct information and you will get the type of coverage that you deserve? As uh, so what I'm, I'm, your, your, your first question was, what do they need to bring to yes. us to have this conversation? So coming factually, it's very important. Yeah, come with the truth, guide the customer. So what are you done with the truth? And truth. I, I'll come. I'll come. <laughs> I come with a come with a valuation as best yeah. as you can. Try and get a property valuation. You're not the expert, and you don't want um, that type of average to apply. And mark you, uh, just for the benefit of the listeners and this conversation, I'm not being very technical because we are the advantage. We practice uh, a 85 percent average clause, which is in of itself a favorable. Uh, way of approaching average okay but just for it but just to make it rudimentary yes, yes. that everyone can appreciate it's important that well, when I'm, you're speaking of very and if it, that you're doing that it makes sense for us to understand that concept because yeah. i wouldn't want to have a person who would have you know gone out and not one you know all right the place when you want no premium all right so you know let's give me no. that insurance or if you have to run really? no i i would have loved to get some information from Shamar in regard to uh, how you deal with structures for families that are a little mixed. Why I say mixed, you have some persons that you're living in one structure, husband, wife, and two kids, but there might be an older child before the marriage, a big child in the middle of the relationship. Oh dear, you want to ensure that everybody's taken care of. But we don't have all the time to discuss all the different structures that are out there. So Shamar, how can we find you? How can we send you an email so that we can have some more conversation with you? Uh, very easily. I can give you my contact number, one 325 6944 I'm very responsive on Instagram. 
I am Shamar Clark, very simple. All right. Or my email address is Shamar, S H A M A R underscore Clark at Sajikwar.com. Great, great. Appreciate it. And just final word from Raquel. Raquel, final word to you. Uh, what do we do going forward to ensure that we live a steady life irrespective of what the tragedy is? Ensure. Ensure that you're properly insured. Bob, Bob. Is that happy written? I don't know. <laughs> ensure you're properly insured. And with that said, thank you for joining us. I know quite a bit of users are on our Twitter. We are, we'll be giving away another gift for the first person to retweet the last thing that Raquel said. And I went to tell you. All right. But thank you for having us. Next episode, we'll go further in this business of managing finances through our different arms of Sadikor insurance. I was your host. And happy to have you here, Ochi Sohamil, the first. See you next episode. <laughs> <laughs>